I've had the question, well, are you going to send me the questions ahead of time? Hard no to that. I do not send the questions ahead of time. I will not send the questions ahead of time. Um, that's a recipe for disaster um, for two reasons. Number one, uh, you know, I won't, I won't do it. Uh, it it's, it's just too much work on both sides. Uh, and, and number two, it sounds prepared. The last thing you want is a podcast that sounds scripted. Um, the only thing I will possibly do is one or two sentences in the beginning. Uh, you know, hey, welcome back to NJ Criminal Podcast. I'm here today with Tom Ritter. You know, and I'll, I'll just make sure I've got a little intro. But sometimes I give you that to do, and I don't even record that. I, I might uh, send you something to record as an intro. So my, I guess the, the short answer to your question is I, I assure them that it is a very informal conversation uh, that is not going to be prepared or scripted. And if, and I also say to them, and this is, I've never had to do this, but I tell every potential guest, listen, if we get into something or you say something that you wish you hadn't said, or it comes out in a way that you, you, you wish, you know, we all kind of flub things sometimes, or maybe misspeak or say something that um, we wish we hadn't gotten into, you just let me know and, and we'll edit it out. I have never had to do that, but just by letting the guests know that that's a possibility uh, and and assure them uh, that I'm not going to, you know, publish anything that they don't want me to publish, that relaxes the potential guest as well. I'd rather have my guests correct me in the middle of the conversation as they would in a regular conversation as opposed to when we hit stop saying, oh, wait, you got that year wrong or that date wrong. It, it's a lot easier to just say, yeah. oh, wait, you mean, you mean uh, 1969, not 1970, as opposed to me trying to go back and fix it afterwards. You know, the other thing, I, the other thing I'd like to say just in terms of um, specifically to lawyers is that, you know, a any lawyer can spend thousands of dollars on the very polished formal videos right to 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 put out to advertise their practice but i i think that the podcast enables the the listener the potential client uh to really hear the the host to hear the guest um to really get to know them um and that value uh, is priceless. Um, but for anyone who's not sure whether or not they would, you know, want to host a podcast or, you know, whether or not they'd be able to come up with, you know, things to speak with people about or potential guests, I would invite them to come on the podcast and talk about what they do. And I think what people find is that it's a lot, it's a lot easier than you think. Because why? Because we do it all day long. We talk to people all day long. And it's nothing more than than that. It doesn't have to be a three-hour interview where you speak about every possible thing you could speak about. Like, hey, there might be a, a, a recent change in the law or there might have been a case that came out uh, that's worthy of discussion. You know, there's, I know a lot of attorneys that are very intelligent and, and and very intelligent people disagree all the time about the state of the law, and that's why the law changes all the time. And so that's food for many, many conversations.